Hey, what's up guys? I'm going to be telling you some things that I absolutely love about Star Wars Battlefront 2, some of my top favorite things that they've added or changed or tweaked or something like that. So let's get started and I'm going to tell you some stuff that I really, really enjoy. So the first thing, of course, is they removed the whole fucking token thing. I don't know what went through their mind when they made that. It just completely was ridiculous. I would camp the hero spawns. There was only like two hero spawns and vehicle spawns. It was absolutely ridiculous. So now you get somewhat of a score streak kind of feel from Call of Duty. Everything you do from getting kills, assists, even dying in a heroic way will give you battle points which you can use to get your heroes. And that's also something I love too love too is the battle point system like i said you get battle points for everything you do if you're controlling the objective you're going to be getting thousands of thousands of points if you get multi kills and flanks you're going to be rewarded for that if you go and dive into the objective kill the person off it and then die you're going to get an objective kill and you're going to get a heroic sacrifice which gives you almost a thousand battle points as well so i really do enjoy the whole battle point system. That was a good idea. The second thing that I really enjoy um, or like to change is that heroes and villains are not as OP as you would think they would be from the first one. So let's let's go back to the first one, 2015, the first Battlefront of 2015. Heroes and villains were an absolute fucking nightmare to go up against. It was so tanky, they could take 80 shots from lightsabers and bullets, it was just impossible to kill one from the start. I did a few times because some of them were garbage. But, you know, I would be Bubba Fett or Bosk and regenerate health, and it was just a fucking nightmare to go up against a full health hero. So in this one, you do sort of have the same amount of health, but you can kill heroes and villains very quick and very easy. If Yoda is, you come up behind Yoda, you pull out your vanguard, two pumps, he's dead. That's easy. You get a flank on a hero, you can seriously fuck them up. Which also leads me into the second part of my favorite thing here, is the health regen for heroes. Now, I did want health regen for heroes in the first one, but not, you know, regenerate the whole fucking thing. In fact, they pretty much nailed exactly what I wanted, was that your max health will slowly decrease every time you regenerate. So, if you're at 750 max health, you take a few hits and you're at 600, it'll, you know, increase maybe to 650 instead of 750. So, you can still regenerate health and stay in the battle longer you just aren't going to be as overpowered as you would be regaining all your health like a Bosk in the first one. Another thing that I'm really, really stoked about is the amount of cool, you know, like extras, reinforcements there are. When I found out, when I first saw that there was Yoda and Darth Maul, I thought that that was it. They're just adding Yoda and Darth Maul. We're not getting clones and we're not getting droids. But then I was wrong. We got clones and droids. But then I was like, oh, we're not going to get super battle droids. or We're not going to get jet troopers or stuff like that. But then we did. And I still got surprised with some reinforcements like the sky troopers for the Empire, the death troopers, and all the rocket jumpers, the B2 RP battle droid and stuff like that. I really love all the extra stuff you can do, all the vehicles. I love how you can go in the LAAT clone transport ship. I love how you can be in the MTT droid uh, artillery tank. I love you can be in the AAT droid tanks. I love how you can be pretty much every vehicle you could think of, from starfighters to vehicles to speeders. Everything is there, so I really do love the amount of vehicles that are in here, especially balanced for both sides. You know, Rebels finally get some ATRTs instead of having zero vehicles like the first one. So there's a vehicle for every side, every faction, every map's got its own unique thing, and I love how you can be much more than just a trooper or a reinforcement trooper. You can be in the sky, the ground, you can dominate in your own way. 
Another thing that I um, thought is a cool addition is when I found out that Battlefront 2 was coming out, I wanted to know how the ammunition was going to work. In the first one, it was just an overheat bar. And if you overheated it, you have to wait a longer time. And some people like overheat, and some people just like reload. They both have their pros and cons. So what they did in this one is pretty much both and something cooler too. So every time you shoot, your blaster will overheat. But as it overheats at any time, you can press square and instantly reset it. So you can shoot a couple times, reset it, you can reset it whenever you're in the clear. And if you do overheat, you can quickly have a little mini game pop up where you press fire at a certain selection of the bar and you could either instantly refresh it or get unlimited ammo for like five seconds. So I thought the ammo, that was a good idea and that is pretty good of both sides of ammunition and cooling power. Another thing that I love is that we do have a lot of maps this time around, but they can feel different every time. A lot of maps have different weather, time of days, and stuff like that. So, for instance, Kashyyyk has a daytime and a nighttime. Both of them can play really different. It's harder to see things and stuff like that. Uh, on Naboo, there's one for, like sun sundown or something. Everything is all orange and it just looks so different. I could have sworn I was in a different part of the Naboo map. So I love how different maps have different effects and it feels like there's 28 maps instead of 14 or something like that. Something else I like um, mostly is the hero and villain selection. Um, of course I'm a huge villain fan. I am 100% satisfied with every villain that we have. Bubba Fett, Bosk, Vader, Sidious, Kylo, Maul, and Aiden. Even though, you know, you know, <laughs> one of them doesn't belong there. And then for the Rebels, you know, we get some... I wouldn't have put Lando back in there and stuff like that, but whatever. We got cool heroes, cool villains, and some of their abilities are different. You know, Bosk is completely different. Bubba Fett is mostly completely different. Darth Vader is like 75% the same, and even though we have like 70% of the heroes and villains are recycled from the first one, we only have like 4 or 5, I don't even think it's 5, I think it's 4 new characters to play. I still think that they all play well, and you can be pretty powerful with any of them. Um, the next thing that I think is a good change that I like now are the star cards. Now, in the beta, I had the, I played the fuck out of the beta, remember that. I put in at least like fucking 50 hours into the beta and stuff like that. So I had the epic version of Bubba Fett's rocket barrage. So instead of shooting seven rockets, I was able to shoot 14. And I thought that that was really unfair and I was killing so many people with it. And I was like, all these epic cards are like doubling and tripling the amount of said gain or boost. And I thought that was way too much. And then when I get the game and I look into the cards, the epic versions don't really have a humongous impact. Things that really affect damage do not make it any better. For example, the thermal detonator grenade, basic, has a blast radius of six. The epic version has a blast radius of seven and two, three, and four are basically just decimal percents, 25, 50, and 75. And that's the same for a lot of different things is that you can have the epic card and you'll have a small little buff. That's all it is. So a lot of the cards are like that. Some of them, you know, the epics do have a increased like 40, 50% of a boost or something but nonetheless I feel like they did a good job nerfing most of the star cards another thing that I'm you know always happy for is um, the challenges there's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of challenges I'm nowhere near close I'm like 27 percent 
done with all the challenges and I play a shit ton and complete a shit ton. You get challenge it rewards for everything you do. You get them for completing the campaign and everything you get. Currency, loot boxes, weapons, attachments, you get so much. I feel that there's so much reward feeling towards getting these challenges that you don't always just have to keep grinding matches to get the loot boxes is that you can you can rely on challenges to give you 500 credits a thousand credits or a loot box on its own so i feel like these challenges are really cool even though there's no daily challenges there are timed challenges and stuff like that so i'm pretty happy with a lot of the stuff i'm going to be doing a full review out of everything and a full list of everything i liked but these are just some of the hot things that i was really really happy for and excited to play and experience with the new game so that'll be it for this one and i'm going to be doing a lot more videos later